Hi gang, Allison Rasmussen here on behalf of ISEA. We've been talking a lot about teacher self-care, but there's a bigger reason why we need to make sure that we're taking care of ourselves, either as a teacher or just as a person. When you think about trying to fill up the people around you and you're thinking about yourself as a water pitcher, you can only fill up so many people before you're empty. When you think about yourself as a vase, you still can fill up the amount of people that you need to, but you overfill yourself first. So when we're talking about teacher self-care, it's really important that we're making sure that we are overflowing with all of the things that we need when it comes to being able to help other people around us. So today, let's talk a little bit more about gratitude, a little bit about grace, and a little bit about humor. We've talked in the past about what a great habit gratitude is to get into, but there's actually science behind it. In the study of positive psychology, the intervention of doing, uh, noting three moments of gratitude and why that you are grateful for those a day for 21 days literally showed rewiring in people's brains to be looking for more optimism and seeing more happiness around their world. So it's really, really important to be able to find gratitude, even if it's in the smallest things. It's very difficult to find things to be grateful for right now. You can't go outside and be with your people. You don't even get to go and do the normal things that you would do at school. A lot of the things that bring you joy, for example, in interacting with your students isn't a part of your every day. So it's really important to be able to find things that you are grateful for um, that happened in your, in your space right now. Again, kind of hard, because you might have kids under feet and you might have a spouse underfoot and all of a sudden all of you are sharing this maybe not so big space. And even if it is a big space, it seems a lot smaller when everyone is there. So being able to find small pieces of gratitude, like there's no jelly in the peanut butter jar because your son figured out how to make sure that one doesn't get into the other when making his breakfast. Or your teenager actually took their shoes to their bedroom instead of leaving them in the middle of the living room floor after they were watching Netflix for the 438th time. So looking for small things and looking for the silver lining on the clouds is one way that we can make sure that we are um, practicing our gratitude and lifting up a time that might be hard. So speaking of that, making sure that your vase is full, make sure that you're practicing grace at this time. It's really important to know and understand that you cannot expect yourself to accomplish what you always have because the world is not how it always has been. You need to make sure that you're allowing yourself the self-care practice and the grace to know and understand that you're not going to respond to things the way that you might have otherwise. You are under a time of stress and you need to give yourself some grace to be able to manage and accept the things that are coming around for us. That being said, it's also super important in practicing gratitude and practicing grace that we also practice looking for the funny in our world. We all know that life is better when we are laughing. So it's important to be able to look for some of the things that make us laugh. One of my practices since the beginning of our quarantine time has been to go live on Facebook and deliver a joke every day. On top of the joy that it gives me, it's been amazing to see the response that I've had from my friends and family who uh, respond and comment on how bad the joke was or how good the joke was or how it was just the thing that they needed at that time. So remember to look for moments of gratitude. Remember to continue to give yourself grace and always be looking for things to make you laugh. So with that today, I'm going to leave you with a joke. I was walking down the hallway one day when I saw a brand new baby teacher beating his head against the locker. How did you get yourself into this? How did you get yourself into this? I felt really bad for him because I knew he hadn't been teaching for very long. So I went up to him and tapped him on the shoulder. I'm like, um, are you okay? Is there anything I can do for you? He said, yeah. Can you help me get this kid out of the locker? So on that note, I hope you have a great day. I hope you take great care of yourself, that you continue to work on your Maslow's steps and you take every day with grace, gratitude, and humor.